Hey guys, Clevel here, and today we are going to be covering uh, basically like a chest popping system. So if I go to this guy, he has a re uh, reward called quest rewards. So let's pretend that I got the quest book, then I got the item required to finish the quest, and I get this chest. Now when I put it in my inventory, well it's all fine here, but when I put it in, it'll give me whatever was inside it. So if I do that, I get a city pass and a silver, and it tells me plus three silver, plus one city pass. So this is just an easy way to make it so like a villager can give you multiple things, um, which is really nice for at least this quest system that I wanted to do, because I wanted to give the players a lot of items, but I could only give them one from a villager trade. So we're going to go ahead and recreate this. It's very simple, but it's kind of complicated. Um, it uses the data command, which I have a tutorial on and uh, we'll put those away for now. It uses the data command, which I have the tutorial on, and it uses uh, some loot table stuff. So what you're gonna need is a shulker box and a chest. Now this isn't my first time doing this, as you can kind of see. Um, I'm just trying, I wanted to make it faster, so I re-recorded. Anyway, so we have a shulker box. Um, you're gonna need a shulker box, a chest, and there will be a starter data pack link in my description for this starter data pack. You're just gonna put it in your data packs folder of your world and uh, unzip it, but I'm renaming it and copying it. And I'll call this chest pop. Then in the data pack, you're going to want to rename the namespace to whatever you want. I'll call it chest. And then you want to go here. So you will need, you don't need any entity loot tables, but you will need the shulker box loot table. So I'm just going to delete everything that's not necessary. You don't need recipes. You're going to need, you don't need block tags, but you need function tags. So the function tags are what let the game know what happens so when you type reload chest colon init is played that's why it's called load.json and every tick chest colon main gets played that's why it is a uh, tick every tick of the game now if we go into the chest folder we have a bunch of stuff we don't need advancements i'll be going over this at uh, starter data pack in my next video um, but i just wanted to get this out because you guys wanted to see it um, I'll keep items tags, but we don't need entity or block tags. Um, I'm going to be basically doing a comprehensive data pack tutorial that covers a bunch of stuff, but not everything. Anyways, so init and main, we don't really need either of these. To do this, you just need one function file that you can play. So we'll just call this chest pop. And I'm just saying it's like popping from the chest. Okay, so let's work with some basics of the commands. So we're going to put, we have two items in here a diamond called shiny and a stone called stony and to get them you can use mcstacker.net to generate items that have custom names we are using custom names because you will see later why that will be useful um well, let's take these away so if i have this chest let's pretend that the player got it so somehow you create a give command that gives them a chest with these items inside it i don't know how you're going to do it but somehow they have the chest in their inventory let's see what data the chest has so if you get an entity, this player, you're going to get their selected item in, uh, data. It comes up with this. So it is a chest and it has all these different things. So we navigate through the tags, putting a dot every time we see a curly brace. Um, and we put a bracket every time we see a list with a bracket. So selected item, we see a curly brace here. So we put a dot, then we go to tag, then we put a dot, then we go to block entity tag. Because we basically want to grab the items in the chest block entity tag, then we see a bracket, so we put a dot, then we do items, and let's just do that. So what it comes with is a list, because you see these br uh, brackets, it means it's a list of things, and that list of things contains our two items that are in the chest. Perfect. So what else contains, so now let's look in this shulker box and see what contains a similar list. So data get block, and let's put something in here. Uh, let's put shulker, oh can't put a shulker box in a shulker box unless you're really crazy okay so when we get the data there is a list called items as well and this one that we were at also is called items so if we do items it will give us a list as well so now we have to take the list from my inventory and put it copy it to the list that's in here so we can do that with data modify you can copy mbt so data modify block and we are going to modify that blocks items so we are going to take the list called items and we are going to set it to be from entity me selected item dot tag dot block entity tag, uh, block what was it block uh, blah, 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 block entity tag 
dot items. So we're copying my selected item blocks tag dot items list onto the chests. Now, if I hold this and do that, now you have the shiny and the stony in there. Perfect. So this we want to save. And keep in mind that I'm using this specific shulker box. It's good to have one shulker box at one set location that you always manipulate for player inventory manipulation, just for the best efficiency, instead of like placing one and then doing stuff and then deleting it every time. It's better just to have a set one. So we're just gonna make this our set one. Okay, so that got it into the box. Now, how do we get it out of the box? Well, luckily, so if I break this, we're going to get a shulker box back, which is not what we want. We wanna get the items back. So luckily in the data pack, we have a useful thing and that is a loot table for a block called a shulker box. So in this loot table, it's a useful tool to have. If you mine a shulker box with an item that has a tag called drop contents true, it will drop the contents. This is from hybrid pies library. So if you give yourself a diamond pickaxe that says drop contents true, when I mine this, <sighs> If I mine it in advanced survival mode, it will drop the contents just like that. And that is only with that pickaxe, so it won't mess with your survival mode stuff. Okay, so now if you use the slash loot command, slash loot command lets you loot things using other things. So it like kind of simulates you breaking a block or simulates you killing a mob. So loot give, so this is where the items are going to go. It's going to give it to me. And what we're going to do to what we're looting is we're mining that block with a diamond pickaxe with drop contents true and if we do that boom i got the two items perfect so just like that we kind of were able to empty this chest using only two commands and uh, if i type slash reload and then i take these things out of the box and i hold this and i do function chest chest pop Boom, I got the two items. So that's just the first part. I'm gonna show one other little thing to show how I got those messages of the items. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind is this would be only selected items. If you wanna do it to any chest in the inventory, you're gonna to have to modify what you're looking for. So instead of checking the selected item, you're going to check all of the inventory, just like that. And we have to find a special item in the inventory. So that's why we put the brackets to specify which item. And then we put the curly braces to search for an item that matches the criteria. And the criteria means that it's an ID Minecraft colon chest. So that's to match the criteria of being a chest. So now we'll do it no matter where we put it in the inventory. The last little bit is that message. This uses a Talra MBT command, which I have a tutorial on as well. Um, you can go Talra at S. So this is just the Talra message, but a lot of generators don't have uh, compatibility with this new thing. It's called MBT. The MBT we're gonna look for is items at zero dot tag dot display dot name. So we can grab the name of the item that is the first item, the zeroth item in the items section and we're going to grab its name and we have to specify which block it is at and it is at the block 38, 56, negative 34. So if we do that, we see text colon quote stony because the first item says that. Now, if we want to make it so it doesn't have all those brackets and quotes, we can go interpret, sorry, true. So this means it's going to interpret it like it's a string. So it'll make it whatever it is. If you had a colored name, it'll make it colored text. That's just what's going to happen. So that's good. Then we need that, but then we need to add some more components to this tell raw. So let's add some more components. So what else do we want? We also want to say, have a plus symbol. So we can add a plus symbol by just doing a regular text component, but then we also uh, could have like, I guess we could add the count and there's a couple tricks to that. So this makes it say plus. Now to do it as a count, it's a little bit trickier. And what you're gonna wanna do is go to minecrafttools.php to help you generate this. Um, but basically, if I go into my data packs, uh, you have to have this custom thing from uh, this custom text component that grabs the score. Because if you try and grab the count, it'll say a B in it. And I don't know, B, I don't like the look of saying the B. So instead of saying a B, you can make it say only a number with no B after it. But you're going to need 
this text component right here, which this is a bit that I always kind of tend to forget. So let's just copy that, paste it here, and I'm gonna clean it up. But it should look like score, and then you pick the name of the player. So we're going to do at, uh, let's just call it uh, count. And then what objective it's going to display, we'll just call it count. It's okay, it's only used one time and we can make it red, sure. So this is the extra bit that we need to go in between the plus and the other words. And it won't do anything currently because we don't have any of those scores, but we'll just put that here. Okay, so now we have to put count on a count score. So let's create a scoreboard called count. Okay, so this is going to be put in the init function. So if somebody else puts this in their world, then it'll load the count score. You don't for lose any scoreboards. So then we do execute store result score count count. So it's a fake player named count on the count score. Then we're going to get the blocks data and we are going to get its items at zero dot count. It's going to get us the count and the count is one B, but on a scoreboard count shows up as only a number with no B after it. So then when we put those two together, this will grab the number and save it without the B and this will display the number. Okay, so if we type reload and we do this, it will say plus one stony. Now, if this chest had 64 of them in it and we did it, plus 64 stony. So that is just, I'll put three for now. That is how you get the numbers showing up in the chat and you can add spaces anywhere you want. That's just more tell Rob. To mess with now if you want to have more than one sadly you do have to hard code it so you're going to have to just put a bunch of these and all you do is you change this from zero to one zero to two zero to three just change the number to the next in order and this one also needs to be changed so one two three so now we have it working so we can put up to four items in here um and uh sadly if you want to use that special component you need an item that's already named so you'll see the tnt will show up as uh, not basically not working so if we do that it will just say oh let me reload so if we do that basically it'll just say plus three stony plus one shiny and then you'll also see these extra two so it automatically plays this code so we have to now specify some stuff so we have to go execute if block so we have to make sure it doesn't do the tell raw unless there is something there so let's do execute if block. If that, oh wait, no, sorry. If data block items at zero. And this will give an extra condition so that it only says the tell raw if there is an item there. And that's just the last bit of this code. Hopefully I wasn't being too confusing. This is kind of a medium level, uh, skill level thing. And it requires that you know a lot of stuff that's specifically to 1.14. But I have a lot of tutorials on that you can find on my channel. But just cleaning that up and adding one more thing to the front. So as you might have seen, if I don't have the chest and somehow it gets run, I still get the items. So we want to clear this contents each time. So we'll do data remove block items and that will clear everything. So if we do that before, then it will make sure that even if this gets run accidentally for somebody, they won't get free stuff. So everything put together, we have the chest, we run the function, and we get three stony, one shiny, and one something that doesn't have a name because TNT doesn't have a custom name. And I guess you could do clear at S chest one to clear one chest. Um, now triggering this to happen uh, you can do in many ways and I'll just briefly say but you guys can come up with like maybe if you click a button or you might click a sign I don't know or if you want it to be automatic you can do execute as at a if entity at s mbt equals so now you're just going to see if their inventory has something that has an id of chest so now it'll just if you do this and then you go run function chest colon chest pop. This will execute at everybody and always check, but doing this is kind of inefficient, so I don't suggest it. There's some other tricks you can do, uh, but I'm not gonna cover them in this video. 
um, but just to close things off for you guys so that it's exactly like what I showed you before if I have this item it instantly popped into my inventory um, and it only says two of these uh, the proper amount so if there's only one thing in there it will only display one text so that was pretty much everything hopefully you guys like that I put a poll out and this is what you guys wanted to see um, I'll do some other polls later but I have some really high importance things to get out but if you like that leave a like uh maybe consider subscribing if you want to see more tutorials other than that i'll see you in the next one peace